Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM. Well, today I actually had a plan for how this video was going to go, to be honest with you. But as I was running through this season, running through my simulation, well, the plan went out the window because I realized that the philosophy I'm trying to bring to you right now doesn't actually have a core basis to it. But I'm going to share the philosophy with you anyway. By the way, today's video is a philosophy style of play video, not a tactic video. So there might not be a tactic in the description for you to download. But I'm going to show you in today's video how I managed to dominate the African Cup of Nations with Nigeria. So, if you're a Nigerian following this channel, and or if you're following African Cup of Nations, for example, for the past few years, you realize that Nigeria hasn't won the African Cup of Nations for a while now. I think the last time we won the African Cup of Nations was in 2013. It's been, I, don't, I should be correct. I'm going to have to check that and get back to you. But it's been a while. So, the point is, the point for me in Football Manager 2022. In football manager 2022 was actually pick up the nation Nigeria, like my country. By the way, in case you do not know, I'm a Nigerian. So, to go with Nigeria, to play the African competitions with Nigeria, and then to try and see what exactly the problem was and if it was possible to actually win the African Cup of Nations with Nigeria. So, I strung up the tactic, threw in some players anyway. That's basically how I'm going to describe it. But then the philosophy is in from the, what I used to approach the tactic anyway, the philosophy I use, the philosophy I use, by the way, if you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button to get notifications when videos are released and also to like the video you find this philosophy actually quite useful. So the basis is with Nigeria I tended to or I tend to find a way I would normally want the Nigerian team to play in real life which is not exactly what we normally do when I watch the games, when I watch Nigeria play. It's, not always, it's always a bit passive, you know. But they sacked the manager recently, or the manager and then the Nigerian FA parted way. So, there's a new manager now in charge, and I don't know his name, I might have to also check that, which is quite unpatriotic by my opinion. But anyway, the philosophy was to build um, a way, the ideal philosophy that I feel Nigeria should be playing with to make us better, to make us more dominating. So that's why I created a football manager 2022 and went on to dominate the African Cup of Nations. You can see here from the screen in the performance column of the international, if you're using an international city, you can see the top results that I had 10 new against Sudan, 6 new against the Central African Republic, and then 8 new against Liberia. There were other standard fixtures in this the games I actually thought I was not going to win, and then I ended up winning them. Like games against Senegal, to be fair, Mane didn't play, and then Morocco as well in the final of the Nations Cup. But you can see the, the the journey all the way to the Nations Cup final, it was quite straightforward. We didn't concede any goals until we met Senegal in the semi final. So, this philosophy, in my opinion, tends to work. I'm going to show you the philosophy in this video. So, like I said earlier, it's not an ideal tactic video. It's basically a philosophy video that I'm going to actually share with you right now. So, with the tactic, I tend to just throw in players everywhere. But I like this segment of Volante, so I tend to, I threw him in as well. The segment of Volante on attack because I noticed in Nigeria we do not really have a central attacking midfielder that I'm aware of that can actually, you know, fill in the show. I would do I might want to use any other player that I feel can actually play in that role, but it's rare. So you might want to use the Shadow Striker as well, but let me be honest, I just threw in players into this tactic and just threw everybody in there and then allowed them to play the way I feel they were supposed to play. Like this defender, Ola Aina, is not supposed to be here. I think he's a right back as well. Yeah. He's a right back, but I threw him in here and then the player that is in friendly to here, as you can see is normally this person will really be on attack duty. So let me get back to the point before I forget. In the philosophy, the main point we're going to be looking at here is the team's style of play. That's the team instruction. So the player instructions are not, are not that important. But just to, before we get into the player into the team instructions, I'm going to show you the players that actually have instructions and why they do have instructions. So the tactic that I'm using here is a 4-2, is a 4-4-2 flat but then with two defensive midfielders and then there's an alternative tactic I managed to create which is a narrow diamond with two strikers. Basically I threw in anybody and then I noticed that we know Nigeria quite well. Nigeria actually has good inverted wing backs on the left hand level. Inverted wingers, sorry. They have good inverted wingers, Alex Wobi and Samuel Chikweze. Chikweze is not supposed to be here. You see what I mean? I'm actually throwing anybody I think you are but the point is, looking at the team instruction, yeah, before I forget, I told you I was going to show you the player instruction. So if the goalkeeper has no instruction, the central defenders do not have any instruction. The wing back on the left hand side doesn't have any instruction. The wing back on the right, no instruction as well. The defensive midfielder, though, this is Wilfred Ndidi. I didn't just want him to sit here, so I asked him to tackle harder, mark tighter, close down more, and then pass sheets shorter. So the, wide, the winger on the right is close down more, and then roll from positions. And then the attacking players basically will all have all room from position. I'm going to also explain why. And then the 
Yeah, you got to move out the right also has room for instruction and room for his position than the two strikers, no instructions whatsoever. Now to the philosophy, the team instructions anyway, the team has been asked to mark tighter and then to press the opposition more. It's not extremely or much more urgent pressing because I expect the team to press the opposition anyway. And since we have three players up front, I don't think that really matters anyway. But I want my players to press the opposition, but in a way that they are not over imposing themselves on the opposition. I'm supposed to allow them to have some space. To come out. This is the out of position, the out of possession instruction. The team is supposed to press the opposition when they are a little bit out of their own defensive line. Not when, not over imposing yourself and then pressing them all the way to their own defense and then not giving them a chance to come out. To me, like I feel that doesn't really make sense that much. Although it works in some teams, but for this philosophy, that's not how I wanted my team to play. I wanted them to always win the ball back early as possible in the right area. So in transition, the team has also been asked to counter press, to counter attack, and then to distribute quickly. This is because Nigerian team, I expect them to play in a fast moving style of play. Even when we were in secondary school, this is what we always talked about. Get the ball back from get the ball from back to front quickly. Run at defense, be drib dribbling, dribble a lot of players, you know, run at the defense and be stylish in your movements and then just be room from positions anyway. Be don't be too static for the opposition to somehow find a way to break it down, which is recently I noticed the way Nigeria was playing. In real life, in the past few years, there was so much possession. I was like, we don't, we don't need this high amount of possession. We're not doing anything with it. So, if you could just move the ball quicker, we might tend to score more goals and win more games. And we impose ourselves on the opposition more. We can tend to kind of like blow them off and then run away with the victory and score a lot of goals. In my opinion, in possession, the team has been asked to exploit the flank. That's because I have two very good white players so i can ask the team to exploit the flanks even though these white players are going to cut inside because that's the nature of their play it doesn't even matter how i put the white players they could be wingers they could be inside forwards and i could also as easily uncheck this option because it doesn't really matter and playing out of defense is not also an instruction i'm going to include because the team has not been asked to do all those what do you call it play out of defense slow possession passing yeah i understand that we tend to okay there's something i also need to mention why do you not include the player out of defense instructions before I told my goalkeeper to play the ball out quickly? You would notice that um, as I've asked the goalkeeper to play the ball out quickly, he hasn't been asked to distribute to any of the center backs or full backs, or even the playmaker. He has just been asked to distribute the ball quickly. So you can take it as he can throw it long, he can take short kicks, he can kick it long, which I would obviously recommend that he do. Because the Nigerian squad, the Nigerian team actually has tall players. This plays into our strength. So if I ask my player to, if I ask my goalkeeper to play the ball out of defense, like that, that would make any sense. So I have all players that can win the ball in the air. So the idea is clear it long, we're going to win the area ball anyway. So that's the idea. Just be quick, get the ball out of the defense for cost sake. Get the ball out of the defense. So in attacking position, like I was mentioning, going out defense is very important. Play expressive. I turned this off when I when I was playing with Morocco and Senegal in the last stages of the competition, last the semi-final and the final. It proved important for us to stay you know, class to stay compact in the way and not be too or not give away too many things. So for play more expressive than instruction I'm tending I'm tending to exclude everything else is blank. The approach play also is to ask the team to pass into space. The play out of defense sorry, I missed that. Pass into space is because we have fast players as well as tall players. You can ask the players to play the ball into open space and then have players run out of space and take advantage of them. Copy other instruction to me is not really inclusive. Like I said, we have four players. I can turn on the float crosses, but that just limits us to one style of crossing. So I'm going to include mixed crosses or leave it at mixed crosses so the players can choose for themselves. There's that freedom I'm trying to create, that freedom. So the attacking width is fairly narrow. That's because of the players that I have, and I also want my forwards to get forward, even though you remember that my wing back is on the front. And I mentioned earlier that it's only on the front because of I used this different player in that role. So normally that player is supposed to be on attack. But fairly narrow so that my players can actually overlap and then the mentality, most importantly, the mentality is super important is attacking. The mentality is attacking, for God's sake. Instead of just playing slow, passive, balanced, cautious, whatever style of play we're playing before, impose yourself on the game. Show the opposition that you're stronger than them. Try and beat them on one on one situations, run at the defense, you know. Try shots for crying out loud. Try shots at the goal. Just remind the other team that you're playing against that you are better than them and then you can actually win this competition and you can win the match that you're playing that's the idea behind this whole philosophy that i was creating and funny enough as blank as the tactic looks it worked out we ended up winning a lot of games than i expected and then when we got into the semi-finals and finals the matches were a lot closer 
than I expected, but then we came up with the victory and then the philosophy actually worked out. This is the alternative tactic. It's pretty basic really. Like I mentioned, it's just what's most important in this system is just the team instructions. How I want my team to play. Not basically trying to fill in any sophisticated player roles or whatever. So the fullbacks in this, this in this tactic are also asked to just play on automatic. They're asked to take narrow. Okay, one of them is asked to take narrow. While the other is asked to cross on the byline. It's not important I can take them off if I use a different player. So I'm Ajayi is not even he's not even a green back. I'm putting him in this role just for the sake of it anyway. So everybody else, there's no particular instruction for my players. Everybody's just, you know, do your thing. That's the idea. You can see the philosophy. The system, the team instruction is actually quite important. So this second system was using two strikers just like the last one and then it was a bit more imposing and then also had um, players closer in the midfield. That's why I used the diamond shape to have a more compact midfield and then use wing backs on the other end. It's basically almost the identical tactic but not really. So it's just a different shape with the same with, with the same philosophy, the same mentality to try and impose ourselves on games. The mentality is also attacking so tempo is extremely high. Yeah, that's pretty much all of it said about exactly the philosophy anyway. You may be asking what the whole point of this video anyway, if there isn't really a tactic to, to go with it. The point is, it's a, it's breaking a glass ceiling for me. There's a way I played football manager before, that then I thought that you have to actually obey all the rules when you're creating systems, when you're creating tactics. Of course, that helps to actually be considered of the players that you have and then the opposition that you're playing against. But then in some cases, it doesn't really matter. You have to actually realize what exactly you want to bring into the game, what exactly you want to produce from your players, or what you, what you want your players to produce, the tactic or the philosophy you're trying to create. Put that into context first, put that in stone, set that in stone, then you know that you will always still be able to tell yourself where you're deviating from the philosophy. Like, now I can't ask my players to be, to play a more possessive, a more possessive, you know, slow tempo, possession based style of it, because that's not what, that's not the thinking I'm trying to bring towards this game towards this particular save anyway, using Nigeria, for example. I don't want them to be slow and patient. I want them to be fast and explosive and very, very clinical when trying to score goals. And then to be imposing on the opposition. That's what I'm trying to to play, to like bring to the team. I'm just trying to explain that. You don't really need to have, to put so many rules on all your players. Just have the mentality or philosophy in your head that what you want to create. You know, when you go into form manager, do not be afraid to actually try those options and then see where it takes you. Do not be scared of any do not be scared of losing too many games and even though you do you can learn from all those games and that's basically the whole point of the video so guys if you found this video useful be sure to let me know in the comment section as well if you need a tactic for me to, uh, if you need a tactic to go with it i can create one for you based on this and if you need this tactics that have all this philosophy from the nigerian say the philosophy i used to dominate the african cup of nations i can also pack it up and then attach it in the description below but that's going to be on request. Basically, I don't see a need to actually include those, but if requested, I'm going to add it to the, back, to the description as well, and then I'm going to share it with you guys. But for now, the more point is, remember to just be free with playing football manager. Don't, it's not that deep. You get what I mean? Yeah, it's not that serious. Although for me, at the point, it was that serious. So I'm actually feeling good today that I'm, thanks to this save, thanks to completing this save before the, before the mission, that I actually went on to win the African Cup of Nations using this philosophy. It means it actually works. So don't forget to hit the like button guys if you found this tip actually useful. It wasn't even a tip in any way. It's more like a lamentation or a confession of how I was really, really feeling and the freedom I feel now when you know creating a system in football manager. So if you found that liberating in any way, you can like the, you can hit the like button as well. Also remember to subscribe to the channel to get notifications when a new video comes up. And thanks for watching by the way. Thanks for listening to my TED talk in any way. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next video.